In today's video, uh, we're going to be going over the family trees of the kingdoms of Benin and Ashanti, um, located right here on my conveniently made African Monarchs Northwest family tree. PDF link is in the description. So we're going to start off with Benin right here. Um, now, Benin is actually not located in the modern-day country of that same name, but it was actually located in southern Nigeria. Now, it was founded in around 1170 by Oranmion, who took the title of Oba, and legend has it that he was the son of Oduduwa, one of the fathers of Nigeria, and one of the main ancestors of many dynasties still ruling to this day. And um, this guy, Iran Mian, established the long-reigning Aweka dynasty, which still continues to this day. And so he passed it down to his son, Aweka, right here, who passed it to his two sons. And it kind of continued in this fashion until we get right here. Now, right here... Um, um, there was the Oba Ewurare the Great, and um, he really started the heyday um, of Benin, um, establishing the Benin Empire at the beginning of his rule. Um, and the Benin Empire became pretty renowned for its amazing bronze and brass making, um, and he established the system of the Queen Mother, the Yoba, like right here, um, who became a powerful figurehead. Um, and um, the empire continued through his children right here. So you had Oba Izoti, uh, who passed it to his brother Oba Olua, and to his brother Oba Ozolua right here. Um, and he was really kind of the first um, one of the Obas to actually have a prominent Ioba, in this case, Ioba, Ioba Idia right here. Um, now he passed it through his son, Oba Isigi, uh, to his son, Oba Orhagbua, um, to his son, Ehengbuda, and finally down to Oba Ohuan. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing. Um, so, Oba Ohuan actually left no heirs. He had no children. Um, and so basically, the person who succeeded him on the throne was the great-grandson of Or Hagbua, right here, Uba Ahenzai, right here. And he kind of started the little period of turmoil. Um, this period also had no clear genealogy. All the sources that I'd looked at um, had no record at all um, for the relations between these people and they all had very short reigns as you can see there were six of them and only a 60 year um, time span um, so Ahenzai passed it to Akenzai who passed it to Akenboy who passed it to Aking, Akenkpaye who passed it to Akenbodo who passed it to Uragene and he died in 1700. Um, and the next ruler actually made it a little bit more clear <laughs> a dynastical rule um, and made the genealogy a lot more clear, that being Oba Ewarakpe right here. Um, and now the genealogy suddenly starts to get a lot more clear. He passed it to his son Uzwere, who passed it to his brother. Oba Akanzua the first right here who passed it to Oba Erasoyan who passed it to his son Oba Aking Buddha um, who reigned for an astonishing 54 years um, definitely a pretty amazing feat who passed it to his very aging son Oba Nosa right here and he passed it to Ogbebo um, who then got I believe, murdered by his brother, Osamwende, who took the throne, who passed it to his son, Oba Adolo, and finally, to Avoramwen. Um, now, by 1897, Benin was actually, after a little while, it was actually conquered by the British Empire, um, pretty much ending the actual... Benin Empire, um, but he did continue his rule until his death in 1914, and um, essentially, um, 
The monarchy still actually exists to this day, as you can see. The current ruler is Oba Eurare, um since 2016. Um, but nowadays it really exists as more of kind of a traditional state. And um, the actual title of Oba is more of a ceremonial title. Um, and thus ends the Benin Kingdom right there. Um, so moving on, we're going to be talking about the Kingdom of Ashanti now. Now, the Kingdom of Ashanti, um, located in Ghana, was first established in 1570 by this guy, Nana Twum, um, who founded the Aboyan dynasty, which, once again, um, still exists to this day. Now, back then, it was actually known as the Kwaman State, and so he took the title of Kwaman Hene, um, and it passed through his some of his brothers as well, um, before finally passing to the fifth king right here, Nana Obiri Yaboa right here. Um, now, he actually, um, during the middle of his rule, he decided to actually start uniting some of the nearby tribes and clans around him to actually form the new Kumasaman state. Um, and in turn, he took the title Kumasaheni. Um, however, this state did actually not last for too long, because by 1701, the ruler Ose Kofi Tutu, right here, the first, according to legend, actually had a golden stool fall from the sky and land on his lap by order of the, his high priest. Um, and this golden stool's occupant was to become the new Asante Heni, the ruler of the Ashanti people. Except that probably didn't happen, it was just folklore. Um, but I digress. Um, and... To this day, um, that golden stool is still the ceremonial throne, which all of the Asante Heni of Ashanti still use. Um, now, after his death in 1770, 1717, he passed it right down here um, to Apokuware, right here. Um, now, one thing that... Ose Kofi Tutu did do um, is he established the importance of the Queen Mother, just like in Benin, um, this being the Asante Hema, and all the Queen Mothers that ruled actually get their own small little info box right here alongside the rulers. Um, and now um, the throne passed, continuing in this fashion. Um, uh, Shanti became very renowned for its gold making, um, obviously as evidenced by their golden stool that they had. Um, and now, um, passed um, for all these different queen mothers, um, the succession system right here is actually quite interesting because, as you can see, um, most of the time it wasn't necessarily father son. Um, a lot of it was nephews and great nephews and all sorts of stuff like that, and occasionally brothers, right? Like right here. Um, I got a link to the family tree this is based on in the description. Um, now, the throne uh, finally um, passed to this guy, Prempe, after a couple of years of civil war. Um, However, um, just like in Benin, um, by 1896, Prempe was actually arrested by the British and sent into exile four years later to the Seychelles after actually losing a war called the War of the Golden Stool to the British. Um, and he lived out the rest of his rule in exile, and um, temporarily the Ashanti Empire was actually disbanded. However, by 1935, the throne was actually established again officially. Um, and his um, nephew right here, Prempe II, took the throne. Um, now, he had a pretty long rule before passing it to his pretty distant cousin, Opoku Ware II, who finally, after his death, passed it to the current Asante Heni right here, Ose Tutu, Tutu II, named after his ancestor, the founder of the Ashanti Empire, which is pretty cool. And... Currently, um, actually, um, it's not an empire anymore. It was officially ended in 1957 during the rule of Prempe II. Um, and the current Asante Heni is still technically considered an absolute monarch of the Ashanti people, and it's a partially autonomous subnational kingdom to this day. 
Um, and one more fun fact for you. So, um, the previous Queen Mother, um, right here is the current Queen Mother, Konadu Yadam III. Um, the previous Queen Mother right here, um, died actually in 2016 at the astonishing age of 109, actually making her what we believe to be the longest living royal in world history. Um, so that's definitely a very fun fact um, to end off this video. Um, now one more thing, um, I'd like to thank you guys for all the tremendous support you've given me um, to the making of this big um, African Monarchs family tree right here, and once again, you can pick up a free copy of it in the description, you can find a PDF of that. Um, I also want to thank you all for um, helping me hit 300 subscribers, um, which is not as big of a milestone, but still something. Um, but uh, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll hopefully be coming out with more of these uh, videos covering the monarchies in this family tree very soon. And see you all later. Goodbye.